You have been vocal that Indian Navy should focus on submarines, not on aircraft carriers. Why? Why, Abhijit, do you keep on saying this? Why do you keep saying, Abhijit, that India should focus on submarines, not on aircraft carriers? Why is it so? Aircraft carriers are very difficult to sink. It's very difficult to sink the carrier as the mechanical structure is such and it is guarded by a carrier group unlike submarines. Why? It's a good question. It's, it's an excellent question and maybe I should explain in detail. Right? So, what's the deal with aircraft carriers? Are they obsolete or are they still relevant? They are not entirely obsolete. But the use, the, the use cases for aircraft carriers are shrinking. And the threats are increasing. Some nations can afford to put a big ring around their aircraft carrier. A proper aircraft carrier strike group with like 20 destroyers and other assets that create concentric defensive rings around aircraft carriers. Imagine how expensive that is. Now, why do I say there is increasing set of there is an increasing set of threats for aircraft carriers, which is shrinking the use cases? Why is that so? So let's first examine the threats that we have. There are now extremely advanced anti-ship missiles. Secondly, there are hypersonic weapons, very dangerous hypersonic weapons. There are now more and more sophisticated submarines. And then we have the advent of unmanned systems of various kinds. These things have fundamentally altered what you call the risk calculus that aircraft carriers face. Okay. So let's go into detail. I spoke about anti ship missiles, advanced anti ship missiles. One is the anti ship ballistic missiles. So China is, has been developing for quite some time these so called carrier kill killer missiles. Okay. There is DF 21D and there is the DF 26B. These are two carrier killer missiles. One has a shorter range, 1500 or so kilometers. The, the other one, 26B, has a range in probably, probably in excess of 4000 kilometers. So these carrier killer missiles, they're ballistic missiles and they can hone in on, on a carrier based on data that comes from satellites like we discussed. And they can obliterate an aircraft carrier. They can carry conventional warheads or even the naughty ones, nuclear warheads. And it's very difficult to, to, to uh, defend a carrier against that sort of ballistic missile threat, right? And because of this, even, look, you may be able to take down perhaps one, two of these, but what if someone launches a barrage, like 10 of these at you? It's almost impossible to defend the aircraft carrier strike group against that. So because of this, aircraft carriers then have to operate thousands of kilometers offshore away from contested regions to remain beyond the range of such missiles. And this significantly reduces the combat, re combat radius of not just the aircraft carrier, not just the aircraft, aircraft carrier strike group, but also the aircraft that the aircraft carrier carries. And that's the whole purpose of an aircraft carrier, to take aircraft far beyond the shores of the host country. Right? So that is those carrier killer missiles, then you have hypersonic missiles that are, that are, what is the definition of hypersonic? A missile that, that travels faster than Mach 5, faster than five times the speed of sound is a hypersonic missile. You have the Russian Zircon missile, which is fast, which, which flies faster than Mach 8. Imagine that. Then the Russians have something called the avant-garde hypersonic glide vehicle. Mach 27. How on earth do you defend yourself against the Mach 27 weapon? 27 times the speed of sound. Even if you know how to defend, do you understand how much it compresses your decision-making timeline from the time you detect something to what decision you should take until and how much time you have before it impacts you? It really compresses that. So the faster a missile is, the less lesser time you have to make decisions and defend yourself and perhaps save the aircraft carrier. Then you have submarine threats. We did not discuss that, submarine threats. So here's an interesting event that happened 20 years ago, 2005. The Swedish have this submarine, 
which is called the Gotland class submarine. It is a very cheap and small submarine. It costs about a hundred million dollars, which is super cheap for submarines. In 2005, there were these exercises off the coast of California, okay, Pacific coast of the U.S. And in these exercises, a Swedish Gotland class submarine repeatedly sank the USS Ronald Reagan, a massive super carrier of the US aircraft carrier. So this one submarine, the, the Gotland class submarine, it was up against an entire aircraft carrier strike group. It had destroyers, it had helicopters, it had anti-submarine aircraft, right? And this submarine, it had air independent propulsion. And it is it, it operates extremely silently and it was able to penetrate the aircraft carrier strike group's defenses, multi-layered defenses, and it was able to score multiple stimulated torpedo hits on the aircraft carrier, right? Now imagine if you, the tor torpedo could be of various kinds. The Russians have these super cavitating uh, supersonic torpedoes. A torpedo can carry regular warheads. It can also carry the nasty ones, nuclear ones, right? If you're able to penetrate this, the defenses and you launch a torpedo, you can blow the, the aircraft carrier out of the water. So this submarine, it costs a hundred million dollars. The super carrier costs between six to 10, maybe 12 billion dollars. Add to that the cost of this strike group, the protective cocoon, that's tens of billions of dollars. So do you see, uh, the cost-benefit disparity over here, right? Then you have things like drone swarms, aerial UAVs that you can, you can use to swarm the, so the aircraft carrier. You can even use underwater vehicles. So this is an emerging threat, asymmetric threat. And through this, you don't want to destroy the aircraft carrier. You want to disable it. You want to, first of all, overwhelm the carrier defensives through saturation attacks. Just numbers, sheer numbers. It's, it's just a mathematical thing. If you have sufficient numbers, you will overwhelm the defenses of the strike group. And then you will, you don't have to sink the carrier. You have to damage it. You have to damage the flight deck. Deck, For example, during Operation Sindur, we cratered the, 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 the runways of Pakistani air bases. If you, if you put gaping holes in the runways, the Pakistani fighter planes can't take off or land. Similarly, if you damage the flight deck of an aircraft carrier, it is disabled. You can't either take off or land from it. So it becomes completely ineffective, combat ineffective, right? So, so now you hopefully understand the kind of threats that aircraft carriers face that they did not face 30 years ago in 1990. Things have changed significantly 35 years ago, okay? And these threats are even more pronounced in geographically constrained waters. Choke points. We have discussed choke points, haven't we? the Malacca Strait, the Strait of Hormuz, the Red Sea, the Taiwan Strait. These are geographically constrained waters, which means choke points. Over there, this threat is particularly pronounced and aircraft carriers are essentially sitting ducks, especially against saturated, saturation attacks. They will not survive that. So aircraft carriers will now have to stay away from these things. But understand that the operational context matters. So where do aircraft carriers still remain effective? What are the use cases we can think of? Huh? First of all, aircraft carriers are effective um, when they are carrying out an operation of power projection against what we call non-peer adversaries. So non-peer adversaries means nations that are not comparable in power or capabilities to the, to the, to the host nation. So if I am the US, and I have this super advanced, powerful aircraft carrier. And I am going out there to bully, let's say, let's say Somalia. Somalia is not a peer adversary. So over there, it's effective. Somalia doesn't pose a threat to the US. Or let's say they want to bully North Korea. Well, North Korea, they have to be careful because North Korea has certain weapons they don't, they don't want to face. So once again, even versus North Korea, the US will have to keep the aircraft carrier away from it. Reasonably at a reasonable distance from the North Korean uh, assets. You see, so aircraft carriers are effective in uncontested or lightly contested air environments where you where they are where they are up against non-peer adversaries. Okay. 
so they are effective for power projection and bullying against non peer adversaries they are uh, aircraft carrier are, carriers are good for deterrence and diplomatic signaling uh, aircraft carrier is 1 lakh tons of naval diplomacy gunboat diplomacy just to show off your strength and might and all that um they have the symbolic pre, symbolic uh, value you know uh, they are symbols of national resolve national, national prestige national capability and uh, they are they're symbolic assets in that in that sense and they are good for patrolling uh, you know trade routes sea lanes of communication um they're good for you know doing patrolling jobs and sea sea control and all of that and they are good for blue water operations open water operations in environments that are far away from your adversary adversary and your adversaries the range of their missiles and from their shores so that is what aircraft carriers are good for if they enter a contested environment no matter how many defenses you have if the opponent is capable they will wipe your aircraft carrier out of existence now when it comes to india what do we seek to do who are our major adversaries what are our major threats one is east pakistan one is west pakistan do we need an aircraft carrier for that we don't another one is china do we want to send an aircraft carrier into waters near china and bully china we don't seek to bully anybody we may face perhaps in the future a chinese aircraft carrier uh, group coming into the bay of bengal or something so what do you do you do you face off with that with an aircraft carrier no you create a to ad bubbles anti access area denial bubbles through missiles and other frightening things you don't need an aircraft carrier to counter an aircraft carrier strike group you counter it asymmetrically but i am not saying that we should wind up our aircraft carrier career program it's a hard won hard earned set of capabilities and skills so we should continue the aircraft carriers that we already have but right now at this point in time until we become a 20 trillion dollar economy we should not invest in more of these that's my point we should invest in submarines submarines are stealthy invisible they can go into your contested spaces they can go into your choke points they can go into your constrained geo- geographical environments and and wreak mayhem there that's why submarines are more valuable in today's environment in technological set of circumstances than the aircraft carrier i hope i have given a reasonably detailed explanation of why i insist that india should invest in submarines various kinds of very dangerous deadly capable submarines rather than more aircraft carriers keep the aircraft carriers that we have keep operating those but don't invest in more invest use that money to build more submarines better submarines various kinds of submarines diesel electric submarines air independent propulsion submarines nuclear submarines ballistic missile submarines hunter killer submarines all of that